Hello, good morning, and welcome to my Secret Place Devotion. Today we'll look at a topic called, Who Said Elephants Can't Dance? And our text will be from Hebrews 12, verse 24. I'll read it from the New International Version. To Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. You know, one of the moments that changed this world, which we've been discussing for a, period, for a short while now, the moments that changed the world was the moment that Jesus came into this world. Now, the moment Jesus stepped on planet Earth, it now meant that man was no longer defenseless in the court of heaven. Man now had somebody to stand and defend man. The Bible says that Jesus is our advocate. You know, before Jesus became a high priest, nobody could stand before the court of heaven and defend you. And, you know, whenever the devil brings an accusation, to the court of heaven. The Bible says that the devil is the accuser of the brethren. Every time the devil brings an accusation against you or against any man that is saved, Jesus now stands and defends that person unlike before. So one of the moments that changed the dynamics of man forever was when Jesus was born. And the Bible says that he was a high priest, meaning that man was no longer defenseless. You know, you are not defenseless. You have somebody that is speaking on your behalf. Before then, did you notice that judgment was very instant in the Old Testament, even though in the Old Testament they had a priest, but let's see the difference between the priest of the Old Testament and when Jesus came and became a priest in Hebrews chapter 7 verse 26. It says, such a high priest meets our needs, one who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priest, he did not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. He sacrificed for their sins once and for all when he offered up himself. The other high priests were actually, you know, representing the people of God, the Israelites and all that. But the effect of what they were doing was very limited. But the Bible says now that Jesus has come, that his sacrifice was permanent because he offered up himself and therefore it was a permanent sacrifice. Beyond just being a high priest, beyond just representing us, Jesus actually shed his blood. And, you know, beyond representing what did his blood do? His blood was able to wipe away our sins. And the Bible says in the scripture, the text scripture for today, it said that the blood of Jesus, he speaks better things than the blood of Abel. He speaks of mercy. So right now, because of the blood of Jesus that was shed, mankind now has mercy. Like I said, in the Old Testament, judgment was instant. The moment you do something, you're stoned or some horrible thing happens to you and all that. In fact, as early as Genesis chapter 6, man was already angry. Angry. God, sorry, was already angry with man. And the Bible tells us in, in Genesis chapter 6 that God repented and he made man and all that. And then man was wiped away by the flood as early as Genesis chapter 6. But you know, the moment Jesus came, there was mercy. There was the office of the high priest. So whenever man falls, God, Jesus stands and says, listen, I've been there. I've experienced these things that these people are going through. And he's able to represent us effectively. But not just representing us, his blood that he shed is able to wipe away sins and in Lord, there's an abundance of mercy. So anytime you sin, there's mercy to wipe away your sins. But I need to sound a warning here. I need to sound an alarm here. With the Bible also sounded. He said in Romans chapter 6 verse 1, he said, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may, it may increase? By no means we die to sin. How can we therefore live in it any longer? You know, because there's so much mercy. People are taking the mercy of God for granted. So they go ahead sinning, believing that, oh, well, when I finish this sin, I'm going to repent and ask for forgiveness and God will forgive me. I agree with you. God will forgive you if you genuinely repent. But when you keep on sinning, what you're doing is you're sharing your conscience with a hot iron. And let me even ask you another question. What if in the middle of your sin, you actually die? Or what if in the middle of your sin, rapture or cause, what are you going to do? It is risky to play with sin. So the Bible says, just because there is mercy, should we not continue living in sin? Because there is mercy. No, you can't do that. You have to be grateful to God for the blood of Jesus and live a life that proves that you are grateful. Because I noticed that there are three things people do because of the blood that has brought mercy. The first thing is that people who are grateful to God because there is mercy and because there is the blood. And in gratitude, they're like, Lord, I make up my mind to live a holy life, a righteous life. I make up my mind to walk in holiness and all that. The second group of people, what they do, they feel, you know what, I'll sin and repent. Then the third group, they feel that there's no need. I've already sinned. God can never ever forgive me. This is too bad. So I might as well just keep living in sin. No. Let me tell you, 
because there is the blood, you have mercy. If you're living in any kind of sin right now, or you're living in something that you know that is not right, there is mercy. If you would genuinely repent, the blood of Jesus is enough to for is powerful enough to cleanse and forgive you completely. You can begin a new life. Who says elephants can't dance? Biologists say that elephants can't dance. Biologists also say that elephants can't jump. But that is their own. That is their own um, comment. But I'm telling you now, an elephant can dance and an elephant can drum, which means you too can live a holy life. Who says you can't live a holy life? Who says you can't live a pure life? Who says you cannot break out of that sin? Who says you must live under addiction? Nobody says so. You are the one that is telling yourself that. But the word of God is saying you can live a life of purity and holiness if you will take advantage of the blood of Jesus today. The Bible says when you hear the word of God, do not harden your heart. And I'm telling you now that God is the one speaking directly to you. Yes, you're hearing a human voice, but the person that is speaking is not a human. God is just using me as an instrument. If you will turn your heart back to the Lord Jesus, his mercy is available to cleanse you. His mercy is available to purge you. Like I said, what the Bible was saying, he said, if you hear the word of God, do not harden your heart. Don't say tomorrow that I'm going to repent. Don't say next week I'm going to repent. Today that you have heard it, why don't you repent? Take advantage of the blood because the blood and the mercy mercy of Jesus will not be available forever. A time will come when the blood will no longer be available. A time will come when mercy will no longer be available. Do you know why? Mercy is available only to the living and not to the dead. The moment you close your eyes on earth, you cannot ask for mercy anymore. Mercy is a privilege given to men who are alive. Mercy is a prerogative of a man that is living and breathing. The moment you die, mercy is withdrawn from you. Now that the mess is available, take advantage of it. What I'm saying now is saving somebody's life that is listening to me. Don't turn this off and just say it's one of those things they've been preaching. It is not one of those things they've been preaching. I'm telling you now, if you have ears, you need to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. He's saying that if you're living in any kind of sin, you can walk out of it right now. Because the moment that changed the world is one of those moments when the blood of Jesus was shed. He provided mercy. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5 verse 9, he said now we are justified by the blood of Jesus. You can be justified. You can be set free. Boundary said elephants cannot jump, but that's their own, um, that, that's what they are saying. I'm telling you now, every elephant can jump. And that's the same thing. Who is telling you that you cannot walk out of that sin? Who is telling you that you cannot leave that unholy relationship? Who is telling you that you cannot stop stealing? Who is telling you all those things? You can't if you will take advantage of the blood of Jesus. If you will take advantage of the mercy of God and decide today I'm walking out of that sin. Today I'm walking out of this. The Bible says that we will no longer continue living in sin just because there is grace and there is mercy that is available. The moment that changed the world is the moment that Jesus shed his blood. Mercy was now available for every man and every woman. And I want you to take advantage of the mercy of God. Take advantage of the grace of God. Step out of whatever it is that is wrong and step into that which is right. And you know what? The power of the Holy Spirit will help you. Once you see genuine commitment in your heart, once you see genuine repentance, the strength and help of the Holy Spirit will be available to help you to make it through life. God bless you. I'm very sure that you've learned something and that the Holy Spirit has spoken directly to you this morning. Do not harden your heart when you hear the voice of the Lord. Take advantage of what God has made available to you today. Tomorrow we'll be back at my sacred place devotion and we're going to discover the difference between the legal and the vital. Don't worry about all of that. Tomorrow you're going to understand what God is talking about in the legal and the vital. God bless you. Have a beautiful day in Jesus' name.